everyone, we'll just give a few minutes to let everybody join. Okay, everybody, hello and welcome to the NIBRT Contract Research Webinar. Um, happy Friday to everybody. Um, just a few housekeeping rules before we kick off. Um, the presentation will run for approximately 25 minutes and we will have 10 minutes at the end of the presentation to, for people to ask questions. Um, you can ask the questions directly via Zoom in the Q&A box. Um, and if, unfortunately, we don't have time to answer your questions, you can all, always send through additional questions through to contract.research at nibrit.ie. So just to give you a little bit of, of background about what the webinar will cover, um, during this webinar you will learn the invaluable information on your biologics that world-leading NIBRIC contract research can provide. The webinar will have a key focus on glycan characterization and during this webinar you will learn more about the full range of characterization services we provide to fulfill ICH Q6B and Q5E regulatory requirements. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to our speaker who is Jo Withers. She is the NIBRIC Contact Research Manager. Now, uh, jo has a BSc in Biochemistry from Southampton University and started her career in Analytical Science at GSK. Here she worked in the Biotechnology Develop Development Unit, developing HPLC methods. She then worked as a Technical spe Specialist for Pilot and Production Scale Chromatography pol Volumes at PAL Life Sciences. In 2010, Jo moved to Dublin, Ireland to take up a role as a research assistant in the Dublin Oxford Glycobiology Research Group under the direction of Professor Pauline Rudd. Over the past 10 years, Jo has gained extensive knowledge and experience on the characterization of biopharmaceuticals and she now manages the team here at NIBRIT. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Jo now and um, I hope that you enjoy the webinar and I will back on once the webinar is over to field the questions for Joe. Thank you. Hello and good morning to you all. Thank you Alison for the introduction and thank you all for joining me today. In this webinar I will be talking about the full range of characterization services we provide with a key focus on N-glycan analysis. I will start by giving an overview of NIBERT and I will pre briefly discuss NIBERT's research strategy. I will then give an overview of the services we provide, followed by the service spotlight on n glycan characterization, where I will discuss our analytical workflow. And I will finish the webinar explaining how you can partner with us. NIBERT stands for the National Institute for Bioprocessing Research and Training and is a world-class institute based in Dublin, Ireland, whose mission is to provide training and research solutions for the biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry. NIBERT train and educate over 4,000 people annually to work in all areas of bioprocessing. And this year, the NIBERT Online Academy, or NOAA, was launched and provides interactive multimedia online training courses on all aspects of biopharma manufacturing. Opened in 2011, NIBERT's research and training facility features state-of-the-art pilot scale manufacturing facilities. Our wonderful facility is pictured here on the slide and if you would like to have a look around you can go on a virtual tour found on our website. NIBERT performs world-class industry-aligned research in all areas of biopharmaceutical manufacturing. 
The NIBIT research strategy focuses on enhanced product quality and productivity. To achieve this, there are four central strands of research that are interconnected by NIBIT's principal investigators. These elements, cell biology and engineering, bio bioanalytics, advanced manufacturing, and bioinformatics and data and analytics span the disciplines of molecular biology, bioprocess engineering, protein analytics, and bioinformatics. NIBERT research teams collaborate with the university and industry partners across the world, and their research is funded by industry collaborations or funding institutions. The NIBERT contract research department was established over 10 years ago by Professor Pauline Rudd and provides the biopharmaceutical industry with the analytical characterization services needed to fulfill regulatory requirements. Our team of scientists have expertise in a range of analytical techniques and are world renowned for their glycan analysis capability. Our mission is to exceed our customers' expectations with innovative and bespoke analytical services providing detailed characterization of their biologics during development and process change. We have worked with top 20 global biopharma companies, as well as startup and virtual companies, SMEs, and also law firms. Before I move on to discuss our services, I want to highlight the ICH guidelines that I will be referencing. The objective of ICH is to ensure that safe, effective and high quality medicines are developed. The ICH Q6B and Q5E guidelines outline that extensive characterization is performed in the development phase and where necessary following significant process change. Characterization of the biotherapeutic is necessary to allow relevant specifications to be established during development. Our portfolio of services fulfill all aspects of the ICH Q6B guidelines in terms of protein and glycan structural characterization, physical chemical properties, biological activity, immunochemical properties, and product and process related impurities. We also offer bespoke analytical method development and consultancy. NIBERT contract research utilize a number of key pieces of equipment for analysis, such as Waters UPLC with UV and fluorescence detection, Beckman capillary electrophoresis with UV and lift detection, BDFAX Melody, GE Biocore, Beckman XLI analytical ultracentrifuge, and Thermo Q Exactive mass spectrometer. Over the next three slides, I will give an overview of the services we can provide. For glycan characterization, we can perform full N and O glycan characterization, and I will discuss the importance of this in the service spotlight. We can also perform sialic acid quantitation and glycan site occupancy. For protein characterization, we offer peptide mapping by LCMS, which can yield amino acid sequence confirmation, NNC terminal sequencing, and the detection of PTM, such as oxidation of methionine and deamidation of asparagine and, and aspartic acid. We also offer disulfide bond analysis. For other physical chemical properties, we offer intact, we offer intact mass analysis and profiling of isoforms by various techniques. We provide cell-based and ligand binding assays to determine cell proliferation, cell death, antibody effector function, enzyme activity, target antigen binding, and effector binding. We can determine molecular variants which can be formed during manufacture and aggregation can be quantified by sedimentation velocity, ultracentrifugation. We offer host cell protein or HCP analysis by ELISA or by LCMS 
HCPs can also can sorry, HCPs can um, affect the efficacy of therapeutic. For example, if proteases are present, and also HCPs themselves can be immunogenic. Therefore, it is important to identify which HCPs are present and in what quantity. We also provide bespoke analytical development and consultancy services. And we have been employed by a number of clients to carry out method development and qualification. And we have also conducted projects for law firms in patent litigation. Due to our flexible approach, we can create bespoke projects. Therefore, the services outlined are not uh, an all-encompassing list of our capabilities. Here I am showing a client case study where we performed a package of characterization services on a fusion protein as part of a regulatory submission. We performed N-glycan characterization on the whole molecule and on the individual subunits where we identified 25 N-glycans on the FC and 49 on the linked protein of interest. O-glycan analysis was performed and six O-glycans were identified. Disulfide bonds were confirmed. And intact mass was performed on both the native molecule and subunits both before and after deglycosylation. Finally, aggregation was quantified using sedimentation velocity and analytical ultracentrifugation. Moving on from our services, I will now discuss N-glycan characterization. I will discuss the importance of glycosylation and I will outline our characterization workflow. Many therapeutic proteins are post-translationally modified by the addition of N-linked glycans. A glycan is composed of monosaccharides linked by glycosidic linkages N-linked glycans are attached to the asparagine on, a, on an amino acid backbone where the N-glycan consensus is, sequence is found. Glycosylated biotherapeutics include gonadotrophins, interferon, fusion proteins, as well as monoclonal antibodies. Glycosylation is considered to be a critical quality attribute, or CQA, and characterization is required under regulatory guidelines. There are many challenges associated with glycan analysis. The glycome is not template driven and therefore has a large degree of heterogeneity, resulting in glycans with variable compositions and linkages being synthesized. Unlike other biopolymers like protein or DNA, Glycans are branched structures and can often contain differentially charged epitopes such as sialic acids, sulfates or phosphate groups. Also monosaccharides of a similar class are isobaric and chemically related, which means glycans can have the same mass when analysed by mass spectrometry, even though they are structurally different. Therefore, a multifaceted analytical approach is necessary. This slide outlines the monosaccharide symbols used in the following slides. The table shows the monosaccharides detected in it glycans and their symbols. Shown are glucnac, galactose, mannose, fucose, the charged sialic acids NANA and NGNA, and also the pentose sugar xylose. The Oxford system has been used, which allows for the linkage type and position to be detailed as shown on the right hand side of the slide. And it should be noted that this uh, notation differs to the SNFG notation. The structure of glycans can impact the function of the protein. For example, high mannose glycans have been shown to decrease serum half-life and increase ADCC activity in IgG. And terminal glucnac, this is where the glucnac is not capped by a galactose, result in reduced serum half-life and increased ADCC activity. 
Therefore, high mannose and terminal gluconate decrease the efficacy of recombinant IgG. So ehlic acid has anti-inflammatory properties and results in a longer serum half-life and decrease ADCC activity. And the absence of corfucose results in increased ADCC activity. There are four non-human epitope structures that are able to induce an immune response in humans. They are galactose alpha-1,3 galactose, referred to as alpha-gal. This is uh, an, al an alpha-1,3 linked galactose linked to a beta-galactose. N-glycolyluraminic acid, or NGNA, which is a non-human sialic acid. Beta-1,2 linked xylose, which is linked to the first mannose of the trimannose core. Alpha-1,3 core fucose, which is linked to the innermost gl gluconac. Even in low amounts, these four epitopes can cause immunogenic responses. Therefore, it is important to be able to detect and quantify these epitopes, even in, if they are present in low amounts. It's also important to note that glycans may also indirectly impact the immunogenicity of biotherapeutics through changes in the folding, solubility, or stability of the proteins. The expression system will have an impact on the glycosylation profile. Shown on this slide are some example glycans from different expression systems. At the top is an example human glycan. Show here, shown here is FA2G2S2, a sialated biantenary glycan with a core fucose. Note that the sialic acid is alpha-2,6 linkage. These are present on human IgG not CHO-derived recombinant IgG, although other cell lines do have the ability to generate alpha-2,6-linked sialic acid. Biotherapeutics manufactured in yeast are of the high mannose type, which decrease the therapeutic efficacy. Biotherapeutics expressed in CHO or murine cell lines exhibit human-like glycosylation. oscillation. However, they have the ability to add the immunogenic NGNA or alpha-gal epitopes. Biotherapeutics expressed in insect cell lines result in the smaller palsy mannose structures and also insect cell lines have the, the ability to add the immunogenic alpha-1,3 core fucose epitope, as can plants, which can also add the beta-1,2 xylose uh, immunogenic epitope. Glycosylation of biotherapeutics produced in non-human cell lines can also be influenced by a number of process-related factors such as pH, carbon source, dissolved oxygen, temperature, and also nutrient supplement during manufacturing. Moving on to our workflow, our sample preparation involves enzymatic release of N-glycans with pinase F, which is, which is an enzyme which cleaves between the glucnac and the asparagine. Alternatively, pingase A is used if analyzing plant or insect-derived therapeutics, which may include the alpha-1,3 linked core fucose. Fluorescent labeling is performed to increase sensitivity. 2AB is our standard label. However, we can also use other labels such as Rapiflor, AQC, or APTS if analyzing by CE. And after labeling, we perform an SPE cleanup prior to analysis. I will now explain our analytical workflow where we use a combination of technologies. Hydroph hydrophilic interaction liquid chrom chromatography, or HILIC, separates glycans on the basis of shape, charge, and hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces. Therefore, allows for high resolution separation of complex glycan profiles. Glucose units, or GUs, are generated using a dextran ladder to normalize retention time and also to facilitate data analysis. Linkage analysis of glycans is achieved by exoglycosidase en enzyme digestion, followed by hillic separation. Exoglycosidase enzymes cleave a terminal monosaccharide with a specific glycosidic linkage. 
For example, NAN1 specifically cleaves alpha-2,3 linked sialic acid and the SPG enzyme specifically cleaves beta-1,4 linked lactose. The cleavage of specific linkages yields a characteristic GU shift in the HILIC profile, which is used to, to interpret the data and to elucidate the glycan sequence. Weak anion exchange chromatography, or WAX, separates glycans on the basis of the number of charged residues on the glycan. WAX separation allows for the relative quantitation of charged glycans. Sialic acids, phosphates, and sulfates exhibit a negative charge and contribute to the glycan charge profile. We perform 2 DLC with wax in the first dimension and hillock in the second dimension. This reduces the complexity of highly complex glycosylation profiles, as shown here on the slide. LCMS with fluorescence detection yields composition information within the HILIC profile and is used as an orthogonal technique to confirm elucidated glycan composition. Shown here is the fluorescence chromatogram and an extracted ion chromatogram. The extracted ion chromatogram shown is for an M over Z of a glycan composition which corresponds to the glycan A2G2S2. We would confirm the presence of a glycan by interrogating the spectrum of these peaks and also the isotopic distribution. For complex samples, there may be several isomers with the same M over Z or composition, as seen here in the extracted ion chromatogram example. The M over Z values confirm composition but do not confirm pattern or linkage. Therefore, mass spectrometry is used alongside exoglucosidase sequencing for confident glycan assignments. To summarize the service spotlight, we use a combination of technologies to obtain the highest level of structural information. I will finish the webinar and tell you how you can partner with us and why you should choose us. We have extensive experience in managing complex characterization projects, and we can provide our clients with bespoke projects, flex flexible scheduling and quick response times, clear communication and updates throughout the project lifetime, tailored and detailed reports to ensure full clarity of data and results, and a subject matter expert and dedicated analyst who offer support throughout the project lifetime. With over 10 years experience, we have analyzed a variety of proteins and glycoproteins expressed in a range of cell lines and expression systems. Therapeutics we have characterized include monoclonal antibodies, gonadotrophins, fusion proteins, erythropoietin, interferon, and biosimilars. Finally, I will talk you through our project process. The first step is to contact us. Following this, our experts will get in touch to discuss your requirements. From there, a tailored project proposal will be generated outlining analytical workflow, schedule and budget. And we will schedule the project according to your required timelines. Sample analysis will be performed by a dedicated analyst who will provide regular updates throughout the project. At the end of the project, a detailed comprehensive report will be provided and we will follow up with you to answer any comments or questions that you might have. If you would like to partner with us and require assistance with your biopharmaceutical characterization, method development or troubleshooting, please contact us at plus 353-1215-8100 or email us at contract.research at nibert.ie. 
I would like to thank you all for listening. Um, and now we can try and answer some of the questions. Great, thank you, Joe. Just put my camera back on here. Okay, so one of the first questions that we have coming through is how much sample is required to carry out the glycan characterization using the workflow you described? This is a very good question. Um, and one that uh, is, is commonly comes through as an inquiry. Um, it depends on the molecule being characterized and the number of glycosylation sites it has. Um, if we take a monoclonal antibody, for an example, we would ask for around 2.5 to 3 mg. However, if sample is limited, we can also review our workflow and modify that where we can, um, and we'll try and accommodate sample amounts where we can. Okay, Bruce. Um, second question is, how do you identify glycans of the same mass with the approach you have described? Okay, so as I think touched on quick, quickly there on, um, in the webinar, you can have an M over Z value, um, which is, has the same glycan composition, even though the, the glycan may be structurally different. With our, our helix separation, we can separate these isomers and using the exoglycosidase digestions, we can use these to help us determine the, the linkage and the pattern of the monosaccharides. Okay, um, another question here is, how do you report structures of low abundance? What threshold do you use? This, uh, this is an interesting question and one we actually discuss uh, within the team quite a lot. We don't have a set threshold, so to speak. Um, we are able to assign glycans in peaks with a peak area of, of as low as 0.1%. And the decision to report glycans will be made on whether the assignment could be support, supported by the orthogonal data, for example, if we have um, hilic and exoglycosidase digestion to support that assignment. And this is really where highly skilled, uh, trained analysts are required to, to, to interpret the data. Okay. Um, another good question is, how long does the typical glycan characterization project take? Okay. Um, this, again, will depend on the complexity of the sample. The amount of time uh, that we, we schedule quite a lot of time for, for data analysis because of all the techniques we use and the amount of time you would spend doing glycan assignments can vary. For example, for a monoclonal antibody, this may take less time compared to that of the characterization of a complex molecule such as a gonadotrophin or a complex enzyme. Um, it would also depend on the number of samples. Uh, to, to, to give you an answer, um, if we take a monoclonal antibody uh, as an example, we would usually schedule around 12 weeks um, for a full N-glycan characterization project. So this would include sample analysis, data interpretation, and also the report writing. Okay. Um question here, I think you may have answered it already, but I'll just, uh, what is the limit of detection for n glycans and how much map do you need? Okay, so the, uh, in terms of, this goes back to the threshold question, I think, yeah. um, we can assign at very low levels um, with the data that we generate. And again, we would only assign glycans where we're confident in the assignments. Our standard release would be from, for an IgG, 500 micrograms, so we would usually request 2.5 to 3 mix. Great. Okay. Um, 
Okay, and then just um, one final question is wax analysis a UPLC analysis? And if yes, does wax hillock mean online biodimensional analysis? Okay, so we actually run our wax on a, on a HPLC um, and our fractionation is offline. So we would fractionate the, the peaks coming off the wax system and then run them back on the, the hillock on the UPLC. Great. Okay, that, that's actually the the questions that have come through. Um, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to contact, contact us at contract.research at nybrick.ie. Um, I'll close off the webinar now. So thank you to everybody who joined. Make sure that you check out our website for further information. And this webinar was recorded. So if you would like access to the webinar post event, I can make sure that that's sent off to you. So. Okay, thank you everybody and have a nice Friday.